metaphysics, uh, which is the real meaning of Sufism. Um, in Arabic um, or in Persian, Sufism is called tasawuf. And tasawuf means the vision of things beyond. I know that a lot of people feel they want to know, you know, how to develop things in themselves, and the metaphysics seems a little bit too remote. But um, it's like, for example, a worker in a factory saying, I don't care to know how the factory is run. I think one does want to know how the factory is run. And I think when there are moments when um, the consciousness of higher planes um, begins to emerge uh, through the veil. And um, if one has a reminder of uh, the conditions of things in the higher spheres and also the story of one's um, descent on earth, how one will fare in the heavens after one's passing, I think that not only makes sense of one's life, but it also prepares oneself for death and resurrection because the whole of life is an involvement in the passage from the the transient to the eternal. Um, if you ask what uh, do um, the realized beings experience in their in their highest consciousness in their meditation, well, of course, uh, certain ones, at least all planes of consciousness, at the same time. But uh, certainly, at the at the summit of their being, there's a consciousness of oneness. And whenever, Hazrat Inatran says, whenever a being, that is, a fragment of the totality, experiences that state in which he was before he was involved in becoming, he reaches the fulfillment of his being. Um, you see, we're used to seeing things from the point of view of man, and is that which imprisons us and causes us uh, suffering that arises out of our limitation. Whereas what the mass is continually trying to do is to make us see things from the point of view of the masters. And there one sees the wide horizon instead of the limited perspective. It is the consciousness itself which has involved a part of itself in its creation while a part remains as creator exactly as water frozen into ice uh, and yet water abides within and the ice lasts only for the time that it is frozen all things have been created out of it and when the time of existence is finished all return and merge into it now the Sufis recognize four stages in the descent uh, let's say, of the one and only being into uh, multiplicity. And they are called by the uh, terms which you should know, of course, um, the Persian terms, ilm, ishq, vujud, shahud. Ilm is a stage in which the consciousness acts as intelligence. Ishq is a stage when the activity of the rays of consciousness have increased and uh, this has caused confusion among the rays and made power out of intelligence which is will in simple terms and in poetic terms love third stage is consciousness vujud the creation of vehicles such as mind body and the fourth step is shahud where the consciousness has reached its utmost goal. Now, we'll try to explain this a little further. Now, within the... Uh, first of all, in the beginning is the silent life that some of us experience in uh, the highest um, consciousness that we ever retain in meditation. The silent life where all multiplicity has disappeared, where all egos have fallen out of focus 
and there's only unity. And this is what is meant when we say, La ilaha illallah. Now, out of this silent, absolute state, there arises simply what one might call self-consciousness, God conscious of himself, and when uh, Moshe says, of his existence, unlimited by knowledge of form and space. So, in this, there is no knowledge of any uh, multiplicity, any beings or any attributes or any qualities or space or time or anything of the kind. There is just pure intelligence. And then, out of this uh, pure intelligence, awakens or emerges uh, nostalgia. And the word that is used is ishk. So at first, ilm, which is ya'alim, for example, ilm, knowledge. The second one is ishk, which is, well, it can be translated by love, it can be translated by desire, it can be translated by nostalgia. I like the word nostalgia. Uh, in other words, all was born out of the divine love. Intelligence became love. And which obviously is finally the wish to um, share what is already contained in the one it's altruism, let's say, it's this outgoing, outpouring of love. Um, you know, I've often quoted, um, uh, first of all, the hadith that is to be found in the basis of, of Sufism. There's, of the tasawwuf of, of Sufism, there's a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad that says, God speaking, I was a hidden treasure and desired to be known, and the whole creation is... Um, the way in which I am able to see myself. It's the kind of projection of God into creation, and through this he can see himself. Well, that's ilm. That's the first attribute that we talked about. That would be the purpose of all, that the unknown become, becomes known to himself by projecting himself in a multitude. All the latencies within him manifest to view. And then the dervish, Nifari, who was this madman who came out of the desert and who said things that were... We have them, many of those words, they've been published, Nifari's work, works have been published. And it just doesn't seem to make sense at first until you you go in more and deeper and deeper into it and you realize that it's the ultimate sense and everything else doesn't make sense and it's the only thing that makes sense. Uh, you have to get to that, in that state of matsubiyat, that state of intoxication. And you can see from his point of view. And he said, no, it wasn't in order to know himself that God created the universe. It was out of love. It was out of love for you who had not yet existed. Like, like it was for the love of the possibility of your existence that he drew you out of himself. And in fact, that he departed from his state of unknowing. It's like the first renunciation or the first sacrifice is God sac crucified from the beginning of time so that we may be free. It's the kind of idea that you have. And so, you know, was the cause of all of this knowledge, was the cause of all of it love? That is what we have to find out in ourselves, of course, both and more still. Now, the next um, descent, let us say, the, the word is used by the Sufis as tanazulat, which means descent, is to seek the tendency of intelligence to seek an object, even as the eyes seek something to look at and the ears something to hear. Um, Ibn Arabi speaks about this nostalgia of God to see himself in another himself. Uh, which every human being shares, of course, um, who is, however, not quite himself because it's a limitation of himself. And yet, because it's a limitation, it is um, a means whereby he can contemplate himself. In other words, it is the longing 
for existence. It's um, the being going out of himself and becoming a reality, as Hazrat Inad Khan says, in the flesh. And we all experience that. We experience, for example, we have a plan, and then when we make that plan concrete, now that's where we experience a great power and a great fulfillment. It's because we are experiencing vujud, you see, that is, existence. We are realistic, one says, in the sense that we want to make an ideal a reality. And if we experience that, it is because originally, of course, God did so better still, because we are experiencing not only originally, but what is happening continually in, let's say, in the cosmos. But um, what happens then is that each uh, part of the one and only consciousness thinks that he is a being. And that's what's happening to us. See. Because of the limitations in which this uh, consciousness has functioned, it split itself up, let's say, <coughs> in so many different consciousnesses. But when the individual intelligence frees itself from this delusion and recognizes its immortal existence, then it becomes master of all states of being. It becomes that ideal being which, whose bliss cannot be equaled on earth nor surpassed in heaven. This state is the experience of intelligence when the knower becomes known to himself, and that is called shahud. Shahud means the witness. So, there was at first ilm, the desire to know, then there was ishq, the nostalgia, love. Then there was existence, realiza materialization. And then finally there is the fact that every part of the one and only consciousness becomes a witness. And in uh, Islam they always say the role of man is to become a shaheed, which means a witness. And this is expressed by this um, surah that says, mm -hmm. and God spoke to the souls of men when they were still in the loins of Adam and asked, am I your Lord? And they said, yes, we will affirm it. It was that I will that uh, established the relative autonomy of man. His promise to affirm the oneness. And that's why when we say la ilaha illallah, we are reiterating the promise that we made in the beginning of time to affirm the oneness of God. <coughs> now, of course, one recognizes seven different stages in the descent. In the descent, uh, the corresponds exactly between these four states of the absolute and the seven <coughs> stages of descent, or seven heavens, is. Um, difficult to establish, but can be established. In fact, I have established it. But that just becomes a little bit complicated. So this is the knowledge of the heavenly planes, of the different stages through which we descended on our way to manifestation, and of course the different stages through which we will ascend in our return, and also corresponds to the different stages that we can experience in meditation. And so it constitutes a kind of topography of states of consciousness, which is very useful to us, because in meditation, when we're in a state of meditation, we may not know where on earth, or what on earth, what, yes, what we are experiencing, and how it is situated in the whole realm of things. We might think, well, this is it, this is it, you see, and actually we're experiencing light. And um, it might be necessary for us to overcome the joy of experiencing light in order to lift our consciousness to a plane beyond light, you see. So it's good for us to know what these different planes are. So the highest plane is, of course, is called Ahadiyat. Um, this word you find in the Surat of the Quran, which is often used by the Sufis in India, it's called Surat al-Ikhlas. 
كله الله أحد الله سمعت يوم يلد فلم يلد ولا يكله كفا أحد أحد you see أحد means the one and of all the وظيفات of all the صفات it means of all the attributes this is the ultimate one and this is the one that is experienced by the uh, by uh, the contemplatives in their highest consciousness they experience the oneness the oneness in which there is absolutely no vestige of multiplicity so this is the same condition as exp- as is uh, described by the hindus uh, called nirve kalpa samadhi that means nirve without kalpa without uh, or nirve bija for example without any seed without any uh, even the vestige of uh, attributes or archetypes no qualities just the one